All right, check, check. There we go. Well, good morning, everybody. How you guys doing? Are you good? Come on, give me a little more than that. Are you guys good? Thank you. Well, welcome to Yakima Four Square Church. My name is Chantal Edler. I am one of the lead pastors here. And today is a special day because it officially marks the end of our summer internship. And this morning is what we call Intern Sunday. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but during our time of worship, every single song was led by our interns. This morning during our sermon portion, we are going to do things a little bit differently, and they're going to be up here with me. And so we just have the wonderful opportunity of continuing on in our sermon series, The Power of Story, as we talk about the parables of Jesus. Now, Jesus was a master storyteller. It's been estimated that up to a third of his teachings came in the form of stories about the kingdom of God. If you want to know Jesus or understand God's kingdom, then it's inevitable. You at some point are going to have to wrestle with the parables parables of Jesus. And notice that I use the word wrestle, not just listen to, not just read, but wrestle, because that is the point of parables. They are not just stories to be heard, but they are riddles to be unlocked. In fact, I read, uh, as I was doing some studying this week for today's sermon, I read about the power of parables in a book, and, and I want to read this quote to you, because it explained it like this. It says, the parables begin as black print on a white page. Told long ago in a faraway place, they seem to be a relevant to our day and time. But as Jesus tells them, the time and space seem to disappear. On the pages of scripture, you see a reflection of yourself and an invitation to join in and live in the kingdom of God. They are the greatest stories ever told, not only because of who told them, but also because they have the power to change us. This morning I have five interns up here with me who for the last 10 weeks have faithfully loved and served this church community. Many times from up here on stage as you saw this morning, but also countless hours in the unseen places. Like Sammy, I'm going to give you a quick shout out. Sammy right there, she created the sermon series graphic. She's amazing. All five of them spent countless hours cutting out all of the little crafts and activities for VBS. We're talking like little scissors and cutting out little people. Like it was a whole thing for hours hours and hours in the unseen places. These guys also, every single week, were partnered with the Union Gospel Mission here in Yakima and participated in their search and rescue uh, ministry where they got to love and serve the houseless members of our community. I'm so proud of all five of you. I'm so incredibly proud of you and all of the ways that you guys have grown over the course of this summer. And we really did stretch them past their comfort zone. <laughs> we really, really did. And as Intern Sunday was drawing near, I was the person who was scheduled to preach. And, and as I was thinking and praying about what uh, we wanted today to look like, I couldn't help but feel like it was significant and important for all five of them to be up here with me today. I thought it was important for all five of them to have even just a small moment to share a little bit about what God has been doing in them this summer. So here with me this morning, I have Alexis and Ashley and Sammy and Alex and Anais over there in the other corner. And this morning, I'm going to be reading our passage of scripture for today and then each of the interns is going to have just three minutes to share a little testimony and story um, and teaching and we're going to work our way chronologically through this parable. So today we don't have the, the um, passage of scripture up on the screen so I'm actually going to ask you to Open your Bibles, open your phone to the Bible app, okay? We're going to be reading Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, we're going to be reading verses 14 through 30. I'm going to give you guys like five more seconds to get there. Matthew 25, 14 through 30, this is what it says. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one, one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. 
Verse 22, then the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That last part can get kind of heavy, and we're going to talk about that today. But right off the bat, to set the stage and to give some context for what we see today, we see here that the master's generosity was unprecedented. A talent in Jesus' day was originally a measurement of money. And a talent on average would have been equivalent to about 20 years' pay for the average worker. So in today's economy, a talent would statistically on average be about $700,000. So even the person being entrusted with the single single talent was being entrusted with a significant amount of money to manage. Now this parable has been really, become really well known in our culture and, and the word talent now we refer to it as not just finances. We know that when we say the parable of the talent, we can also refer to things like the opportunities that we have, our mind, our will, um, anything, our, our life, any gift that has been given to us by God. And really, Jesus' point in this story that is known as the parable of the talents is not for us to simply dissect what these servants did with their talents. We would completely be missing the point. The point that Jesus is making in this sermon, in this parable, is for us to begin to consider what are we doing with the talents that have been given to us. It's a story of normal people being given the opportunity to make a real difference in the kingdom of God. So as I already mentioned today, you're going to be hearing uh, for just a few minutes from each of our summer interns as this is the completion of their internship. And they just are normal people being obedient to the opportunities that God has given to them to make a real difference in the kingdom of God. So Alexis, why don't you go ahead and get us started this morning? Hello, beautiful church family. My name is Alexis. It is such a privilege to be sitting here talking with you all. Speaking of talking... Did you know that 75% of the population is afraid of public speaking? And let me tell you, I am not within that blessed 25. <laughs> so there's five sections of chairs. If you split that up statistically, it would be about four of the sections of chairs that would be afraid of public speaking. That's a lot of people. Um, in Matthew 25, talents are referred to in the form of finances, as we learned from Shanti. <laughs> This does not always have to be the case, though. The Lord has given us all blessings, giftings, and opportunities, and he calls us to steward those things well. Talents or giftings will not always be extravagant or wrapped in a pretty box with ribbons. The vast majority of the time, the things that the Lord is calling us to and the ways in which he is asking us to steward those things and our talents is messy. It's often uncomfortable to steward these things well. But growth happens in uncomfortable places. Matthew 25, 14 through 17 says, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them. And he made five talents more. So also he who had been who had the two talents made two talents more. That's a mouthful. <laughs> we see from these verses, though, that the Lord will give everyone different talents, different giftings, and different opportunities. What are those talents that the Lord is asking you to grow in specifically and steward well? I've had a fear of public speaking since I was young. Somewhere along the line, I began to believe the lie that my voice did not matter. This turned into a fear surrounding using my voice, using the voice that the Lord had given me in front of people specifically. This is also known as the fear of public speaking. <laughs> Ironically, it's also something that I feel the Lord wanting to stretch me in and grow me in, hence me being here right now. 
We all have those things that we, are, feel, that we feel called to, but that scare the living daylights out of us. <laughs> talents that we are called to steward well. What are those talents for you, and what is the Lord asking you to walk into in this next season? For me, I have a giving key necklace that says, your voice matters. This is something that I've had to work through over the years, growing up for the majority of my life in a broken home. I recently got a new necklace, and this one says new. Right now, the Lord is calling me into newness, into a place of stewarding what he has given me in a new way. A way filled with peace instead of fear. It will not always feel comfortable, but it is entrusting in him that those talents that we have been given can be used to glorify him. Well, hi, my name is Ashley, and I just thought that I'd share a little bit before we go into the next point. So I was born into a musically gifted Christian family. My mom's entire side of the family has been blessed with the gift of music, and I make this joke seriously. I've been blessed with the gift of music from my mom's side, but I thank my dad for giving me the rhythm. I just, all the rhythm comes from the dad's side. But um, with that, she somehow wanted to help me grow in any way, shape, or form, whether it was with music or in the arts. So every day, she would actually wear headphones on her belly when she was pregnant with me. And she would play worship music through those headphones. And in our old church, in our old church choir, every day she'd go up to them and, be, and say, I'm standing next to the speaker. And so she would get music going through the speaker no matter what, every single service. <laughs> so as you can see, I have also been blessed with that gift of music as well, thanks to mom being persistent. And growing up, even before I knew that story, I knew I wanted to do something in music. And before we get into the seriousness, I thought we'd throw up a little picture of me in middle school right there. Oh, there it is. Uh, we all had our phases. Mine was fedoras. <laughs> and so, but into that, going into middle school, I had a really hard time with my faith. And I actually left the church and stopped believing in Christ when I was in middle school for around four years. And in those four years, because of the family that I grew up in, I felt like I had to fake my Christianity. But in that, I was still growing my passion of music. I knew no matter what, music was going to be my thing. But in growing in my music, I felt unsatisfied. I couldn't pin it. I couldn't find out what it was. But just something felt not right with it. And so one day, my mom, she said, you know what? We're going to go to your high school ministry. We go and we walk over. And we all know this mom's being moms. She somehow got into a conversation with every pastor that you could talk to in our church and just started talking up a storm with them. And she actually got me connected in our junior high worship team. Now, at the time, I just thought, this is just going to be a way for me to sing. In no way is God going to call me back. In no way am I going to go back to Christianity. But God said, no, just you wait and see. In those times, I rededicated my life to Christ. And then I also discovered that I wanted to become a worship pastor in those times. And one of the things that I noticed as I went back into being a worship pastor and in my walk with Christ, I felt satisfied in my music. I felt truly satisfied and fulfilled because of what I was doing. And when he made me realize that I wanted to become a worship pastor, God said, you want to know how you use your gift? Here it is. Here's the purpose that I have given you. And going into these verses, I've been looking into verses 19 to 22, but I want to focus on verse 21. And it says, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. God wants us to grow with him. And whether it's in our gifts or not, he wants us to be with him in every step of the way. Like I mentioned, when I left the faith, I left because I thought God had left me. I thought he, I thought I felt unworthy. I felt unworthy for so long, four years. But then I realized in those times when I thought God was gone, he was still helping me grow in my gift. And whether we think our gifts are small or not even there, God has something waiting for us. It's, there's something there and we just got to, we just got to look we just got to open our eyes and see it because God opened my eyes and he showed me that I wanted to become a worship pastor. Hello, church. Um, my name is Sammy, if you didn't know me. And jumping right into scripture, um, in verse 22, we see that the servant who had had two bags now had four bags because he invested the money, Right. It's the same thing with our talents that God gives us. If we don't invest in them and utilize them, 
they're not gonna lead to any growth. In James 2.17, it says, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So if we believe that God can work through our lives, but we ignore the talents that he gives us to do so, is not our faith dead? Now, I personally struggled with this because I couldn't see and I couldn't fathom how God was gonna use the gift he gave me as kingdom work. He gave me a creative mind and a talent for design, but how is that gonna lead people to Jesus? By questioning God's ability to use the gift he had given me, I was ignoring every opportunity he was waiting to lead me through. In verse 23, we see that the master shows favor to the servant with two bags by entrusting him with even more. It wasn't just about the investment, but it was about the opportunities that God can work through our lives if we invest in the talents that he gives us. For me, pursuing my gift of graphic design in college, um, it wasn't just about becoming the best graphic designer there was or even about becoming um, so talented, but it was about God using the context I was in, which was a secular college, and using that where I could become a point of contact for God's love to reach the students at Central Washington University. It wasn't about, um, yeah, like I said, it wasn't about me becoming a great designer, but it was God opening up opportunities for kids who would never come to church to hear about Jesus. For Christ to be set apart just by me living out what it meant to be a Christ follower. Through the talent and identity God gave me, he established um, an opportunity for me to live out what it means to be a Christ follower. And all I had to do was trust in the plan that he had for me. Um, it wasn't just about, again, the talent that I had, but it was about the example I could be to my peers. It was about the conversations I could start in my classes. God had such a bigger plan for my life than just making cool stuff, right? Investing in the talent that God gave me was a gateway to becoming an explosive power for the kingdom of God. Morning, church family. I am Alex. And the part that I am most related to from this scripture and this parable is one that not a lot of people would like to be compared to. Um, in Matthew 25, verse 24 to 27, we see what happens when the servant that buried their tablet their tablet, their talent, returns it to their master. I'm sure many of you have seen me on stage or have gotten the opportunity to hear me lead in worship through a worship song or even just through playing bass, and you might stop and think, wow, he's probably been doing that for a while now. But the reality is, I haven't. I just recently started actually perfecting my skills in leading worship and growing in them this past year. And that's because for the longest time, I buried my talent, just as a servant did. And I chose to hide behind playing bass or just playing another instrument that I could because I thought that's all that God wanted for me. In Matthew 25, 25, the servant says, so I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. Now, I was afraid that I wasn't good enough to lead in worship or to sing or I didn't have the best voice like so many of other people that I've met have. So I just chose to hide it. And I never thought that I'd be able to lead a congregation in worship at all. So I never tried to do it. People around me would ask like why I would never sing or why I wasn't on stage singing, but I just told them that, no, I think I'm okay. I think I'm good leading where I'm at and leading other musicians or just playing bass or any other instrument. So I just kind of just stayed there. And I truly could have gone my whole life with just staying and playing my bass and being in the back and guiding the musicians, but that isn't what God wanted me to do. And that would have been only using half of the giftings that he gave me. Now, in doing this, I would be seen as acting in disobedience and be that wicked and lazy servant that the scripture talks about. But now I've been able to just walk in obedience and I've gotten, able to, gotten the chance to take vocal lessons at school so that I can improve and actually double the investment that God has given me. Now, if there's one thing that I want to encourage you in or remind you, it is to not bury your gift. So many of us are afraid just like that servant was and want to just bury it and give it back to God, but God wants you to use it. And 
Even if you feel like you've already buried it and it's long dead, remember that we have a God with resurrection power that can bring that gift back to life. Yeah, so as we've heard, our talents aren't limited to the financial resources we have. Every ability, opportunity, and provision, whether that be our time, our money, our skills, our talents, our possessions, are all gifts from God. Talents per se. And God wants us to invest in the talents he's given us. And we see in verses 28 through 30 at the end of this parable that the last servant who had been entrusted with one talent was told to give his one talent to the one who had accumulated 10. You may be wondering, why? Why was this third servant asked to give his talent away and judged so harshly? You see, the third servant was severely judged not for doing anything bad with his one talent, but for doing nothing while the other two servants invested in theirs. You see, God has given us talents not to just keep to ourselves, but to invest in and into others. I can say for a fact that if I hadn't been invested into, I wouldn't be here in Yakima or on this stage or on any stage speaking or leading worship. I accepted Jesus when I was about seven years old at a VBS vacation Bible school. And ever since then, I knew I wanted to be a part of the team that led the moves at the VBSs, but I was never given the opportunity to. Until my church cheer coach, who also happened to be the VBS worship leader, saw my potential. No one had ever really heard me sing. I was very shy and introverted. You can't tell now. But my coach saw how quickly I'd get moves down during cheer practice or on Sunday morning worship that she invited me to be on the VBS worship team that following year when I was nine. And she had no idea how much I'd been praying for this opportunity. And so I was on the VBS worship team every year after that. And so here's a picture from the VBS we had when I was 10 years old. And I became the head kids worship leader when I was 12 for both VBS and Sunday school until I went off to college when I was 18. But I didn't just keep that gift to myself. I saw the potential in other girls like my little sister and invested in her so that when I left for college, she could take over. And in this next picture, you can see my sister leading worship with her friends at church. She's the one in the blue. And she's leaving for college next year. But I'm not worried about it because I know she's invested in the next generation of kids worship leaders at our home church. But when I left for college, I didn't think I had I'd have any other opportunity to lead worship because I didn't have experience leading with a live band. Like, only Father Abraham with a track and no mic. Like, how do you go from that to this, right? And so that's what I thought. I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to college. No, that's it. But God knew the desires of my heart, and I see now that he had been refining that gift of worship within me those six years I led children's worship. And this next picture was taken 11 years from the first, when God opened the opportunity for me to lead worship at the two colleges I was a part of. And I wouldn't have gotten there, wouldn't be here without the investment of others in my life. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Chantal. Thank you, Jake, for investing in us. Because without that investment, 10 weeks over summer, we have, we would have never grown, whether that be professionally or personally. And for that, I am so grateful. And now I'd just like to ask you guys, do you think that you would be where you are in life without the investment of someone in your life? Are there any gifts that you've been keeping to yourself that you've been afraid of sharing or you think that you're not able to be a teacher? Are there any kids, high schoolers, young adults, friends, or neighbors around you that can benefit or grow from being invested in by you? The answer is yes, of course. You have all been gifted with something, and the Lord wants you not only to use it, but to invest into others with it. And if you get anything from this message, let it be this. Invest in others as God has invested in you. Hey, thank you so much, Anais Church. Can we thank these five interns? Yes. They have 
faithfully served this church for the last 10 weeks, and they have stewarded their talents so well here. I'm so thankful for you guys. Thank you. Great job, you guys. All right, well, as we begin to wrap up today's message, I only have a few minutes, so I'm going to move through this really quickly. But what I wanted to do with the last few minutes of our time together was talk about that last portion of that parable. Because I think that the first two uh, are pretty self-explanatory, and then we get to the third servant, and things start feeling a little bit tricky. And uh, it says that the third servant was, was uh, judged very harshly. And Anais, you did a fabulous job of explaining why that was. Now, the two words that I wanted to focus in on really quick that Jesus used to describe the third servant were wicked and lazy. Now, which, if we're being honest, the reality is, is that wickedness and laziness are qualities that we as human beings all have the capacity and maybe even the tendency to fall into. Jesus' parable of the talents makes it abundantly clear that people around us can suffer not just when we actively hurt them, but also when we withhold from them our very best efforts to steward well all of the talents that God has given us. You see, sin is not always just something that we do. We usually view sin as maybe like a bad action or a bad choice that we made, but it can also be the good within our power to do that which we intentionally leave undone. In other words, what we see in this story is that sin isn't always just a bad choice or a bad action, but the intentional choice to not do good. This is why spiritual maturity comes from maximizing what we have for the good of the master's kingdom, God's kingdom. Our word here at Yakima Foursquare Church for the year that you guys all know by now is Kingdom 2022. We talk about it all the time. We pray about it. It's out in the foyer. It's visible. We believe that God has asked our posture and our, the focus of our prayer to be God's kingdom above everything else. But one thing that has caught my attention is that in this story, we see how quickly we as humans lose sight of the bigger picture of God's kingdom. We get distracted and we try to uh, avoid blame and, and maybe even blame shift onto others and onto God. In this parable, we notice that the underlying issue is that the third servant wants to avoid accountability for his life by saying, no, 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 don't blame me. My inactivity was because of my view of your character not my own. Now, as I studied this parable this week, I, I began to realize that when the third servant accuses the master of being a hard man, he had closed his heart to the master's initial act of generosity. He claims to know that the master is a hard man, but what is clear is that he never knew the master's character at all. He claims that the master reaps where he has not sown, in essence that the master is requiring more of us than he has given us the power to perform. He tries to justify himself by blaming, laying the blame for his own sin of omission on God. Evangelist Oswald Chambers says it like this. He says, my vision of God is dependent upon the condition of my character. I only see from the perspective of my own biases. Just because a third servant claims that the master is stingy and a hard man does not actually mean that that's true. Jesus is showing that the reasoning of the third servant is a cover-up for his own inaction. And even in our own lives, when it comes time to settle our accounts, we cannot wiggle our way out of the responsibility of our lives. You and I will be held accountable and responsible for doing the best with what we have been assigned. As I mentioned at the beginning of today's message, I, I want to remind you that I believe that Jesus' intention for us this morning is not simply to nitpick and to discover what these servants did with their, with their talents. We would be missing the point. I believe that Jesus' heart for us is that we would begin to think through what are we going to do with the talents that God has given us. So take a moment, assess Ask God, what talents has he given you to manage well for the sake of his kingdom? And the question is, are you ready to fully invest? And if not, what exactly are you waiting for? Are you waiting for a better offer, a bigger stage, a better platform? Don't wait. And don't forget, because I think that we so often can get caught up in this, that, that we don't need to get stuck playing the comparison game. 
Recognize that God will never hold us accountable for the talents that he did not give us. If you spend all of your time focusing on the talents of others, you will bury the talent that has been given to you. And when that happens, those around us suffer because of their absence. May we be a people, may we be a church, a community who intentionally stewards the gifts we have been given for the sake of God's kingdom being expanded and people experiencing the goodness of God through us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together this morning. Jesus, we thank you so much for your goodness. God, for your generosity. Lord, we recognize this morning that you are a God who gives good gifts. And Lord, I believe that there are people in this room, that there are people who are watching online who who don't even necessarily know what those talents are. They don't know what those gifts are. They don't know their calling or their purpose. And so Jesus, even right now, I pray that you would begin to illuminate to these individuals what it is that you have called them to do, what it is the way that you have wired them to be. You know, I think it's a lot easier for people with maybe onstage giftings or people that can sing or people that are public speakers. It's easy to pinpoint their gifting and to see how it can be used for the kingdom of God. But I believe that the world is not just changed by people who stand on a stage doing what they do, the world is changed by people going to work every day and being intentional and changing the lives of the people in their context. I believe that there are people in this room that have the capacity to change people's lives by just being who God made them to be, by being hospitable, by really seeing people, by learning how to listen, by learning how to care. And as we continue in this posture of prayer, you can keep your head bowed and your eyes closed, but if you're here and you've never experienced the life transformation that you heard these interns talk about, you haven't experienced the beauty that comes with knowing your purpose, if you wanna understand what life with Jesus looks like, we wanna create that opportunity for you to say yes to that relationship with God. Because it's important, we gotta recognize that God is good and that he is generous and our own broken perceptions of him do not change the reality of who he is. So if you're here this morning and maybe you're beginning to realize that your perception of God is not an accurate reflection of who he is. Today could be the day that you begin a journey of finding out who God is and what his true nature is. So I'm gonna create this opportunity if if there's anyone in this room who has never said yes to Jesus, who has never said yes to embracing and accepting all that he has for us. And I'm not just talking talents, I'm not just talking gifts, I'm talking about forgiveness, I'm talking about grace, I'm talking about the gospel message of the cross, that Jesus loves you, that he died for you, and that because he rose again, because of that we get to have eternal life with God. And that our life, although fleeting here on earth, is so much more than just our time here. But we have the opportunity and the capacity to make positive impact while we're here. And so if that's you this morning, if you've never said yes to stepping into that relationship with God, if you've never accepted that forgiveness, that type of grace, if you don't have the new life in Christ that he offers to you, and that's something that you want, would you just raise your hand as an indication of that? Everyone's heads bowed, eyes are closed. I see that hand. Yeah, that's amazing. I see that one. Anyone else? Yes, I see you. Anyone else? Don't miss out. I'm gonna pray a a prayer over the three of you that just raised your hand and know that in the Bible it says that all you need to do to receive salvation is to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. So this morning you have made a confession, a public confession at that. But I'm gonna pray a 
a blessing over the three of you and then I'm gonna pray a blessing over this church because I believe that all of you are called, all of you are anointed to make an impact in this community. So Jesus, I thank you so much for the three that have just raised their hand to say yes to you. God, we celebrate with their decision of new life. God, I say thank you that your grace is sufficient, that it pours out and it covers every sin, every shortcoming, every iniquity, everything that we have ever done wrong, past, present, and future. Your blood covers that. And so Lord, we say thank you for that decision to say yes to you. God, would you, even as they leave this place, be infiltrating their life? God, would you change their mind, their heart, their life? God, would you position them in a place where the right people that they, that they need to get connected with, to live life with, to figure out this journey with you, God, that that would happen. And Lord, I pray a blessing over every single person in this place, over every single person who's watching online. God, those that feel like they don't have anything to offer, that, that they're not gifted, they're not talented, they're nothing special. God, I pray that you would begin to illuminate to those individuals how it is that you have gifted them and wired them for the sake of your kingdom. You're not looking for a bunch of loud people, you're also looking for the quiet ones who can see, for the quiet ones who can love, for the quiet ones who can care. And so God, would you begin to illuminate what those talents are? And Jesus, I pray that as we step into just the rest of this season, I think about the rest of this calendar year where our word for the year is kingdom. God, that we would be a kingdom focused people, that we would be on mission, that we would be using the talents that you have given us to reach this community for you. Would you guys just extend your hands forward like this really quick? I'm almost done. I know it's late. Jesus, I pray that as our hands are opened, would that physical uh, representation be the thing that you are doing in the spiritual realm. God, that we would be open to receiving all that it is that you have for us. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on this earth, in this church, and in us as individuals as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen.